The way schools are inspected by Ofsted has changed. It's now becoming clear that the bar has been raised, making it much tougher to get an outstanding grade across the board. But there are many other changes too, which everyone involved in schools will need to know about, whether you're a head teacher, a member of the teaching or non-teaching staff, or a school governor. Ofsted has changed the focus and frequency of inspections to drive school improvement and better results for all young people. The key changes we're going to look at are evaluating achievement, the new limiting judgments, a streamlined self-evaluation form and how inspections will be proportionate to need. There are changes to the process of inspection too. Inspectors will engage more with pupils, parents and staff, increase classroom observation, offer feedback to staff and senior leaders and there's a sharper focus on the role of governors. Top of the agenda in the new inspection framework are outcomes for pupils. Rob Hubbleday was part of the team that introduced the new arrangements. We have rebalanced how we judge achievement. In, in, before September 2009, we were looking particularly hard at the progress pupils were making using contextual value added and, and what we saw in lessons. But we, we were putting a judgment on standards to one side in a sense. Now what we've done in the new arrangements, quite deliberately and, and unashamedly, is to say, look, learning and progress are major outcomes that we are interested in. And we will still use CVA. But we, we, we can't ignore the fact that what children leave school with is actually going to be extremely important for them as individuals. We're not just looking at the last year's results. We've, we've made quite a big change here in that we're saying, look, schools often have said last year's results were anomalous. They were a blip year. So we're looking over three years. We don't think you can say achievement is satisfactory in a school if the standards are very low and the teaching, the learning, the progress are, are, are mundane, are not doing enough to drive the standards up. Schools and head teachers are saying that these changes have raised the bar. Is that so? We are expecting uh, more of schools in some areas. We've got new judgments, for instance, in the new arrangements that weren't made in the old arrangements. So, you know, in that sense, it's raising the bar. Um, putting more emphasis on standards clearly will raise the bar. But that's what we all want, I think, in society. We want standards to continue rising, and we want them to continue rising most where they need to rise most, which is in the lowest attaining groups. So it is raising the bar there, but done in a fair way and an open and honest way. We, we share the grades with the schools, with the descriptors. We say exactly what it is we're looking for. I think you'll find that the attainment grade and the overall grade will be the same in the vast majority of cases. And that means it's pretty tough for schools that have a low raw attainment uh, because the, the, uh, the prior attainment, the results that the youngsters come to their school with are very, very low. So schools that get a lot of people coming in with level three in English and maths have got a huge job to do in order to be able to get a, a good or outstanding grade at Ofsted. And I, I think that's unfair because I think a good inspection system would, um, uh, would, would, would be a system in which a good school serving a really tough area has the same chance of getting good or outstanding grades as a good school serving uh, a, a less challenging area. And I don't think we've got that under the new system. Achievement is one of the areas newly designated as a limiting judgment. This in effect puts a ceiling on the overall grading a school can achieve. Limiting judgments apply to the quality of the school's procedures for safeguarding, how the school promotes equal opportunity and tackles discrimination, and to pupils' achievement. The real focus of a limiting judgment is if you are inadequate in that area, your overall effectiveness is inadequate. So for instance, you could, you could have really excellent outcomes. You, you could be doing a brilliant job in teaching, your progress that the pupils are making is excellent, so you might be saying outcomes are good or outstanding, the teaching's good, uh, many aspects of leadership and management are good. So you'd be thinking, well, this is probably going to be a good or outstanding school. But you then discover something is drastically wrong with the way that they go about safeguarding arrangements. 
And this, the inspection team would have no choice then but to say overall effectiveness of this school is inadequate. That's what a limiting judgment does. There are big changes to the self-evaluation form, aligning it to the inspector's own evaluation schedule. Calthorpe Park School in Fleet, Hampshire, used the new CEF during their inspection in June 2009. Ofsted judged they were a good school. Certainly the new version, I think, in my view, is much more streamlined and links much more effectively with, with actual self-evaluation that you do on the ground. It's easier to manage. You, you make your, your gut judgment first. You then um, look around and, and see how that fits in with the criteria. You then look around and find the evidence to back that up. And if you can't find the evidence for, for that particular judgment, then you, you, you shift your judgment slightly. So it's a much more useful process, really. It's the process, in my view, that, that's really important in terms of self-evaluation. It's not a document that you churn out at the end of it. What we're told that Ofsted is hoping to see is that schools are perhaps able to put less information in, but to make that information more evaluative rather than descriptive. Um, and there are links on the website to help schools to connect what they're writing much more closely to the descriptors that the inspectors are using to sort of pull out and really demonstrate the things that they're, they're doing well. However, the questions that were in the old self-evaluation form that were prompts that were there, they're not there anymore. So it is taking time, I think, for heads to, to really work through that if they're going to do it in a meaningful and detailed way. So you've looked at achievement, read up on limiting judgments and tackled the new CEF. When should you expect the inspectors? Depending on a school's performance, there could be up to five years before the next visit. Schools judged inadequate face regular no-notice monitoring visits and re-inspection within three years. Satisfactory means inspection within three years. Up to 40% of these schools will also have monitoring visits. And good or better schools can expect a five-year break without inspection. But all schools will have annual assessments to monitor changes in performance. Some schools could be selected for inspection as part of an annual sample. If there's a strong voice from parents or inspectors have specific concerns on safeguarding, they can call at no notice. There will be um, scrutiny of schools um, annually. Um, and that scrutiny will often take the place of looking at the SEF if schools have um, submitted one of those, looking at performance data that Ofsted looks at, so exam results and so on. So if they're continuing and everything is looking like it's going in an upward trajectory, then the inspection may be deferred. However, if there are anomalies in the data or something has occurred that Ofsted feels is not quite what they would expect to see or that the data can't be interpreted well enough from a desk-based assessment, then they will come in sooner to inspect. For schools, there's much more involvement in the inspection process. Inspectors will spend more time in class observing teaching and learning and give more time for feedback to teachers and school leaders. I think I could sum it up by saying in 2006 it was done to us and in 2009 it was done with us. Um, in 2006, not that the Ofsted inspectors were unpleasant or difficult, um, it was just very much a sense of they were in one room uh, making decisions about us and then they were giving us the information afterwards. Whereas in 2009, when we had the Ofsted, it was much more about our involvement in the whole process. St Peter's Primary School in Winchester moved from satisfactory to outstanding in June 2009. I thought it was really useful that I was allowed to sit in on their conversations after they'd had an observation or they'd been around the school and I did some joint observations with the lead inspector as well. Um, and I have to say I found that really valuable because as they were having a conversation, if there was something they were talking about that I felt actually you haven't quite got that right or, we, or you've mis misunderstood something, then they were happy for me to chip in and say, well actually, this is the case. Roughly what proportion of your staff were actually observed and, and how long do the inspectors spend with them on average? I think probably about 40% were seen and it was about 20 minutes so it's very quick I and mean, it's not a whole 50 minute lesson 
Um, so the carefully crafted uh, lessons, you know, with all the, you know, the lovely activities and things going on, that they couldn't be seen in, in totality, really. Uh, but I think, I mean, we, we, we use that model as well as a senior team. We, we monitor very closely um, and we, we pop in and out of lessons for 20 minutes. And you can get a feel in 20 minutes if you look at a, at a particular aspect. For teachers, much of the talk in the staff room about the new Ofsted inspections has focused on the extra time spent on classroom observations, about twice as much as it used to be the case. Well, here at St Peter's, they've already been through that. So what was their experience? I think that if there's only a few members of staff who aren't actually observed during that time, you do feel a sense of disappointment because you don't feel that you've played uh, your role in the Ofsted um, and that the findings you haven't contributed to. I just had the inspector, um, she came in, she was following a particular child and wanted to see his learning taking place. So it wasn't my teaching necessarily that was being observed, it was the individual child's learning that was being observed. I felt that uh, very much the uh, following of different cohorts of children, your SEN co cohort or your EAL cohort of children was quite important. They were very prepared to have a general discussion, very prepared to give you feedback, very open and stopped what they were doing and gave adequate time for a, a proper debrief. It was really quite informal as well because a lot of the ladies' suggestions we could explain why we didn't do that or why we haven't done that yet. So it felt as if, you know, there was a good chat going on. We're not trying to judge the teacher. We're trying to try to get a, a, a view, evaluate the teaching, but more importantly, the learning. So we look at the children's books, we talk to the children, we look at the planning for more than that lesson, and we, we relate that information we've gained to what parents have said, what the children have said, and we try and triangulate the, the different perspectives. So it's not just, I'm going to watch you stand up in that corner and teach, and I'm going to put a grade. It's nothing like that at all. For governors, the new framework brings their role into sharper focus, questioning how they challenge and support the school while meeting their statutory responsibilities. They expected us to have a much in better in-depth knowledge of what was going on, not just in terms of policies in the school, but being able to understand the strengths and weaknesses. I think probably the best example of that would be that we, are, we had to understand the assessment system that the school had taken on and the individual tracking that they were doing and be able to comment and ask really good questions about whether they got that right. And therefore that was then um, being translated into where we put the resources and what outcomes we were expecting as a result of those interventions. It's already clear that the new Ofsted inspection framework is having a major impact on schools. The bar has been raised and there's a very strong focus now on pupil achievement data. But there are also signs from schools that the greater focus on engagement with staff and on feedback to teachers are being seen as an improvement to what remains for many a rather daunting process.